Uh, well, I can start by saying how much I enjoyed the film, Frank. I um, I saw um, a Barry Gibb play at Glastonbury a couple of years ago, and I just burst into tears about four times. So it was um, it was a, it was great to see their story told in such a brilliant way. Well, well, thanks, and I, I'm very happy that I was able to include that moment because mm. um, you know Barry's back, and yeah. uh, he, he, you know, it, it was great to see him up there and and being appreciated. And now you can say you're in the movie. Yeah, exactly. I'm in there. I mean, I, yeah, I, I tried to look for myself. Um, I was going to say, I mean, there are so many reasons why you'd want to make a documentary about the Bee Gees, but what was it that made that really ignited this flame? What was the kind of moment that made you think, right, that's going to be my next project? Well, it was kind of being in the right place at the right time. I, I was sitting talking with Steve Barnett, who was, who was the president of Capitol Records, and I grew up in a musical family, and um, uh, my dad was a composer, writer, um, producer, guitar player, and he worked at Capitol Records. And so I was in this building that I was in as a kid and in those studios. And, and we were talking about projects. And, uh, and he's, you know, I said, what do you got next? He said, well, we just bought the Bee Gees catalog. And I said, how about that? How about their story? Because it's a family story. Mm -hmm. And I'm the oldest. I'm in a musical family. I got brothers. Um, so I was really fascinated about how that all that worked. Um, I knew their music and until, you know, I started looking into it, I didn't realize what a complicated story it was yeah. and how, you know, how incredibly gifted they were as songwriters. So it, it, it became a really rich uh, subject to tackle. I mean, despite being a huge band, one of the most famous bands ever, so it seems like a strange word to, to put on them, but are they almost quite underrated or misunderstood, perhaps, would you say? Yeah, they're underappreciated. Yeah. I think, you know, they, they seem superficial, but they're really deep. You know, the it's, and, and maybe it's because it came so easy and they were so popular. You know, at that time they had five songs in the top five of Billboard chart. And people started saying, I've had enough of them, but they were prolific. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to try and do was celebrate their legacy and, and how, as you say, how uh, really um, complicated and deep they were. Well, yeah, they, I mean, how do you mend a broken heart? I, you can see Al Green picture behind me always on my wall. Obviously, his cover version is one of the great, but just the lyrics to that song are just remarkable. No, and, and the fact that, that that came out of being brothers and, and Barry reaching out to Robin and, and giving the greatest gift you can give to, you know, a, another singer is you sing the first verse, yeah. you know, and that that was incredibly generous uh, of him and mending the broken heart and the first of sort of their comebacks together because they were a family that would have never happened, as she said, if we weren't brothers, that would have never happened. Yeah. Of course, I mean, it's a, there's a heartbreaking element to this, of course. I mean, when you, especially when you see the interviews you, you did with other people from the band, from the era that are still so young and full of life, it really hammers home how tragic the passing was of two of the brothers, but, well, three of the brothers. But how much strength has Barry got as an individual? What a great kind of man with such an outlook on life, isn't he? Yeah, he, he was fantastic. He was humble and generous and, and, and so giving you know, uh, of his stories and his feelings. Um, and it was bittersweet for me, you know, to tell this story because there is a lot of tragedy. There's sadness. He misses his brothers incredibly. Um, but, you know, to tell these stories and to relive the moments, I think was a good thing, you know, and it, 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 it he loved telling these stories. He loved talking about it and I loved being able to put it all together and to go back and to find, um, there's a, there was a lot of footage and a lot of interviews and try to find those moments that really illustrated the same questions that I was out asking to Barry of Morris and Robin, you know, and to get their essence and who they really were because it was a collaboration, it was a brotherhood. It wasn't just one solo singer. The three of them together were magic. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, I was in the crowd at Gastonbury. So for me, that that whole event was magical. But that was, from my perspective, as a real festival goer. But how was it from, from your perspective? Did, was that sort of seeing all the footage and sort of putting it all together and stuff? I assume the fact it made the film shows that it was obviously something that even Barry himself considers to be quite a moment. Yes, exactly. You know, because the, they're not done. 
Yeah. He's, you know, he's still writing songs. He's still there. The legacy is alive. And I think it's, you know, celebrating where it came from was what I wanted to do. And, you know, th that emotional moment at the end, for me, the three of them singing together at, at the one night only, that was the essence of what they did together, where they lean in and they lean out and they just know each other so well that it's th th that magic that happened of the three of them together. And that song really told it all. Yeah. Well, of course, I mean, with his kind of, you know, saying, like you said, he's not done. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. And it's the same with, with yourself. I mean, it's, you're, the arts and being creative, it, they are industries that there's no date, of, there's no end date, is there? It, it, when you've got an idea, when you've got that spark, it, they are, you're, I mean, for yourself, you're so busy still. It just shows that people when, that work in the kind of arts and in creative industries can really just keep going as, 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 as much as they sort of, as, as when they're inspired to do so. Yeah, I, I, there's no retirement, you know, it, it's it, when you're inspired and there's that spark there to tell a story or to create something, it's all consuming and it's passion and it's not work. And, you know, we love what we do, um, you know, and uh, I can't wait for the next morning to have a script meeting or, you know, it's it, it really keeps you young. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, I'm just looking through your kind of credits today. Your career is outstanding. I mean, your contribution to the arts and to behind to be behind such an array of projects that means so much to so many people, films that will outlive us all. I mean, do you ever take a step back and think, wow, <laughs> it's not been the worst career? Or is that, is, is it, are you, not, are you one of those people that always just sort of lives in the moment? No, it's only in moments like this <laughs> <laughs> that I, that I look back and, I think how extraordinarily fortunate I've been to to work with the people that I've worked with and to to share their passion and to 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 help support their visions, and then to have my my own creative instincts come into being and to explore that. You know, I just love working with people and and you know telling stories and you know we're we're trying to adapt to new times. I'm I'm now working over at the Geffen um, in a virtual magic show with a wonderful magician, Helder Gumieris. We're doing, we did a show for six months called The Present on Zoom. And now we're doing the future. <clears throat> and so we're adapting and we're still creating and we're still being artistic. And, and uh, you're right, it, it doesn't ever end. Yeah. I mean, yeah, just I'm mean, just looking to my final question because I'm sort of running out of time, but looking at some exciting projects underway, of course, you know, there's the ones that stand out, there's Indiana Jones 5, there's Jurassic World. Uh, I'm just wondering, because obviously they're both kind of scheduled for June, July 2020, 2022 release. Is that still the case? Because I know this year has obviously thrown such a spanner in the works in this industry. Are you, or is that still very much the plan to get them out as 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 planned? Well, it's definitely the plan for Jurassic World Dominion because we finished shooting. Thank heavens, <laughs> it's a miracle. Um, we shot another 90 days after we shut down in March. Um, so that definitely will be out uh, summer 2022. Indiana Jones, I hope. Mm. Um, you know, we're working on the script of uh, uh, Jim Mangold um, and the hopes are to shoot next summer, but I don't know. Um, and then to come out the year after that. But that one is in the hands of the movie gods. I don't know. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Frank. And, be and yeah, I, I love the movie. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it again, I think. When, I, when I'm allowed to see my parents, I'm going to go and watch it with them again. <laughs> they were great. big fans. Great. Great. Well, great. Look for yourself. I will. <laughs> Cheers. Take care. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!